Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is the show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. I am joined on another lovely Tuesday afternoon by the ever-enchanting Miss Lisa Locke McGahey. Lisa, say hello to everyone. Hello. Lisa looks like she's going to multitask here as she talks and does her nails at the same time. She's so talented, folks. Mm-hmm. So talented. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, guys. So if this is your first time tuning in, here's how the show usually goes. Uh, I run down some stories going on in the world of geekdom, start off with some Marvel, DC news, move on to some Star Wars and Harry Potter, and then we go to miscellaneous stuff. You guys fire back on social media or the Gmail account. Let us know what you think as well. And uh, we all just have one big group discussion how it's supposed to go. So, before we get into today's show, though, there are a few housekeeping things I want to get into. Uh, first off, this morning it was announced that Roger Moore, uh, best known for his role as James Bond, uh, did die, passed away this morning. So, uh, I said, he was, said, said he was 89. 89. So, he lived a full life. You know, a lot, a lot better than some of the other uh, recent actors or celebrities who, you know, seem to have passed away before their time. Uh, but anyway, his contributions to not only the Bond franchise, but... Film history are, are well noted, and uh, just want to you know take a moment and uh, say it. It's a sad note, but like I said, he was eighty nine, lived a full life, and uh, he had he been ill? Did they say, or was it just? I, I don't know. Actually, probably. I mean, it just he was eighty nine. You know. I know, but still. <laughs> I get you. I but, just am wondering if he had like cancer or something, or if it yeah. was just. Yeah. I'm just know. curious. Who knows? All right, uh, another housekeeping thing, guys. Um, Thursday, I am actually doing a little special here, so. The network TV series are winding down for the summer, and this season you have the season finales of the CW superhero shows, which I am a fan of, minus DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, Supergirl's season finale was last night, we got Flash's finale tonight, and then Arrow's tomorrow. So Thursday, I'm going to be joined by my friend Aaron, who also watches all the shows, and we are going to be going through the season finales and maybe talking about uh, how we would rank each season of the show's uh, this past year, I'm even going to go back and rewatch maybe the definitely the season finale, maybe even the this last two episodes of Legends of Tomorrow. Like I said, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm willing to watch them just to make sure I have a well balanced show going into Thursday. So stay tuned for that coming up so in a glad couple of days. I don't have to be hard. Right, of that exactly. Show. <laughs> You're so glad about that. All right, and the final piece of housekeeping, guys. I did go see Alien Covenant this weekend. Uh, for those of you curious about what I thought about it, uh, I thought it was okay. I would put it probably at number two as far as the Alien franchise. Before I went Salt, I went back and reviewed Prometheus, Alien, and Aliens. Those first two Alien movies I had not seen in a very long time. So I'm so glad I went back and reviewed them uh, and then went back uh, to watch uh, Co- Alien Covenant. But um, while I do think it was a decent film, I'm not a huge Alien fan. Um, growing up in my household, my dad being a big sci-fi guy, I watched the Aliens, the Terminators, the Planet of the Apes, all that stuff, Star Trek. Uh, so I was familiar with it, and I knew probably more than the, the average bear as far as the <laughs> franchise. But you still hadn't seen any of them. But I still had some Alien and Aliens I had not seen in a very long time. So I literally, it was like I was almost like I was watching those movies almost for the first time. And going back, I will tell you, Aliens is still by far the best of them. James Cameron... Wonderful job in that film. Um, but Alien Covenant, like I said, it was good. Uh, it did have its flaws by chance. I heard it's not doing so well at the box office. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Wrigley Scott gets his uh, other movies in the Alien franchise that he's planning. The way it's going, I don't know about that. But in any event here, uh, there's something that really just kind of bothered me about it. And I just want to touch on it briefly is the the, the mythology, the chronological... Um, the chronology? Chronology, I guess. Or more like how the aliens came to be, the Xenomorphs. And based off, you know, those four films off Prometheus, Alien Covenant, Alien and Aliens, I feel like there's a little bit of a gap in between there. Because just to go back to Alien and Aliens, okay? So what we saw of how the aliens were made was we saw in Aliens there was a mother Xenomorph who was giving birth to these eggs. The eggs hatch out these parasites attached to humans. They lay their spores inside, and hours later, an alien pops out of your stomach, and it grows big and kills a bunch of people, okay? That was the (laughs) origin of the xenomorphs. But then we get to Prometheus uh, with that one, and there are these spores that you've been infected by. And in the first one, the main character, 
uh, she uh, she has sex with her boyfriend who was infected, and then there's this alien parasite growing inside of her that she gets out. That once she gets out, it looks very similar to the parasite that pops out of the eggs. Well, this parasite then attaches itself to one of the engineers in Prometheus, and what pops out is like an early rendition of his stomach of the xenomorph. Now, just if you haven't seen Alien Covenant yet, I'm going to spoil a little bit here for you, uh, so just bear with me. But in this one, it's talking about how Michael Fassbender's character, David, uh, actually is on this planet for 10 years, trying to perfect in making the xenomorphs, I guess is what he's doing. But I find it hard that he was able to do that without any other human host, I guess. It's just, the, there's a disconnect there between what we learned in Prometheus to what we learned in Alien to how we got that. Because Prometheus made it seem like the way that the alien origins were is that, of course, was from, started off with the spores, then human DNA, then engineer the engineer's DNA, which I guess is similar in, to the humans. It's almost exactly the same as humans. So in that respect, I get it. But I, get, I feel like there's just still a disconnect between the origins that we know from Aliens mm-hmm. and what we got in Covenant is what it is. I feel like I should watch these movies now because usually I'm better at deciphering that kind of Co- stuff. You might possibly be. And it's only, technically it's only four movies, so you know mm-hmm. you might get a better idea of that. But in any event, um, yeah, uh, Alien Covenant, it's decent. If you're a fan of the Alien franchise or just sci-fi films in general, I recommend going to check e- checking it out. Um, but go ahead, see what you think about that, so... Anything you want to comment on as far as Roger Moore, Aliens, anything like that? No. Okay, cool. So let's get into the first official topics. Now, guys, like I said, normally we start off with some Marvel news, then DC. I'm going to flip it today just to uh, talk a little bit about the news that broke yesterday. Uh, Hollywood Reporter, along with several other sources, uh, is saying that Zack Snyder is stepping away from the Justice League film, along with his wife, Deborah, who is also producer on the film, to grieve the loss of their daughter. Now, it said back in March... They lost their daughter to suicide, and they've actually been keeping it hidden all these months. They shut down production of the film for two weeks uh, to deal with it. And uh, Some quotes, Zach came out and said that he thought going back to work and getting focused on the film was the best thing he could do. But after a while, he realized that was the wrong decision. So he and Deborah are stepping away from the film uh, to deal with his personal loss. And none other than Josh Whedon himself is coming in to finish the film, which is in post-production. Uh, allegedly, Whedon has already been uh, writing a couple of uh, scenes, additional scenes that they were going to add to the film. Now he's actually going to get to shoot those scenes as well in post-production. The film is still set to come out on November 17th, and Warner Brothers came out with a statement saying they fully support Snyder uh, and his wife in, in dealing with this, and uh, it looks like they're fully behind Whedon stepping in and taking over. Now, of course, this being... You know, a tragedy in, in any event. I can only imagine what they're going through uh, with that. But I want to focus more on the fact that Joss Whedon is taking over the film. Uh, you know, in post production, it's not like it's right in the middle. It's it's towards the tail end as well. He's just going to be tinkering with it. I mean, by now, I'm sure the film is almost complete as far as the narrative. He's just going to be added a few things to it. What do you get from this, Lisa? Well, I I'm always. I mean, I am obviously this is a horrible tragedy for Zack Snyder's family, and that's terrible, um, terrible news. So, but I mean, so I think it's probably best that he's stepping away. To uh, I mean, it sounds like he he needs to be with his family, and yes. that they need this time together. Yeah, and they and, have several other kids too. So. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds like this is the best thing. Um, I mean, I get what he said about like feeling like getting back to work might help to distract him, but I mean, I, I've said this. Many times, like, I don't even know how, like, if anything yeah. ever happened yeah. tomorrow, like, yeah, how they're so feeling. much for working ever again, like, my brain would be complete kibosh mm-hmm. for, I don't even know how long. So, like, I don't even know how they pretended they were going to get back to work. Yeah. But, um, now with, like, Joss Whedon taking over, what worries me is that they were already writing some new scenes, like, mm-hmm. they had said that was something they were already adding in, and it always worries me when in post-production... It just worries me about the script itself uh-huh. when in post-production, like the film is done uh-huh. and then they look back and say, I think we need to add some scenes. That always worries me just because if the script had holes big enough that they needed to write new scenes to try to fix the story, mm-hmm. at that stage, 
I don't know. Yeah. It makes me nervous. Okay. I mean, I like that Joss Whedon is involved now and, you know, more, and he's kind of taking over because, I mean, I like Joss Whedon's, I mean, obviously he's very talented. Uh, except for the fact you want to punch him when you well, meet except him. Except that I am going to punch him if I ever meet him. <laughs> but anyway, he's very talented. I, I, I completely respect what he is capable of doing. And I know he's been involved throughout. Yeah. It's not like he's just coming in here now and taking mm -hmm. over something he had no part of. So, I mean, I'm glad about that, but I'm worried because of these new scenes that they're yeah. adding in. It's not like they were just retweaking the editing or that. I mean, adding new scenes, that doesn't that worry you? Well, I mean, it's, it's the same as reshoots. You know, every film has reshoots now. No, no, but reshoots and creating entire new scenes is not necessarily the same thing. I mean, reshoots could just be a scene they already had wasn't working right, so they're bringing in the actors to reshoot that scene. It yeah. doesn't mean that they were... I mean, they, well, they, no. The quotes we, are saying that they were, like, literally creating... It just seems to me like they're trying to, to fix something. It, it doesn't worry me for, for several reasons. Like I said, nowadays, you know, reshoots, any big budget film, they schedule the reshoots. Kevin Feige himself at Marvel Studios says they always, you know, make room in the budget and the time... For reshoots, I think it's the same thing. Um, I don't think it's the same thing. Okay, but with a, a film like this, of course, you gotta realize they have a cut of the film and they watch the film and you know they look at stuff that's not going right or stuff that needs to be added or taken away, and they go back and again they write new scenes, they reshoot stuff, uh, just add to it to, to make the story much clearer. Uh, with Joss Whedon, of course, you know, I practically worship at the, at the altar of Joss Whedon as much as I do George Lucas. With that respect, he got his start as a script doctor in Hollywood back in the uh, early 90s. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they brought Joss Whedon in is completely fine. Also the fact that, you know, last month or a couple weeks ago, we got news that he was already set up to direct, or is going to direct the Batgirl from, so he was already in the Warner Brothers DC family so to speak so bringing him in to finish this off i think is a great uh move as well and it also will help him get maybe more of a grasp of the world since he's going to probably you know direct what will be the next big next film after aquaman in the dc cinematic universe and also let's not forget Joss Whedon, you know, writing it and also directing he is the master and i will say the master of ensemble casts, okay? Uh, Buffy, Angel, Firefly, even, of course, the Avengers. He's good with the ensemble cast. So, a teen film such as Justice League, uh, I think he has the talent and the know-how of how to edit the film to get that perfect blend uh, to make everything work together. I it just so I mean, even with... I, I totally agree with what you're saying. It just worries me with him coming in here on the tail end. Like, you know, when you get yeah. something at the beginning... To where you can get in and fix the script before it starts filming, or you can get in and fix things right off. But he's trying to fix it at the tail end. Well, he's not really trying to fix it. He's he, just he he's, is trying to fix. He's it. not trying to. I mean, he, he again. I'm not going to look at the writing part because that was already scheduled. Okay, that was right. already set ahead. I'm looking at the fact that you know he's got to pick the ball up because Zack Snyder can't get to the finish. He's not changing anything. He's just carrying the ball to the to the finish line. Is what he's doing. I guess and so. just, At least that's the way I see it. And even if he does change it a little bit, it's Joss it Whedon. It just seems to me, <laughs> I mean. if they were just talking about reshoots, they would have said reshoots. Because uh -huh. that terminology in Hollywood is like run of the mill. Reshoots, not unexpected. But they well, were talking about... People. Right, but I'm just saying, the term, you, you hear about, like you said, movie budgets, like they plan for reshoots. They didn't say reshoots. They were talking about writing new scenes and adding new scenes. But that happened probably two months ago or three months ago. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I know that. That's. I'm just saying. I'm talking about the movie as a whole. Uh -huh. Why I'm already worried about it. What? So I'm saying if they were doing that, I'm already worried about the movie. Uh -huh. Then I find out not this, not just reshoots, but they were like literally writing new scenes for it. And now Joss Whedon's going to be finishing it up. So he's going to be taking over to finish up something that he wasn't really a part of. Uh -huh. And it's, it's hard. It's like when, this is a whole other thing, but like when I was in college and I used to proofread papers for people. Uh -huh. There's only so much you can do when you're proofreading something without rewriting the whole thing. I agree. Okay. And I'm saying I think it's going to be difficult for him to come into something that he wasn't really the main part of and try to make it good with that. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Anytime I proof a picture for people, I always I just wanted to get in and write the whole goddamn thing because <laughs> it's too hard to fix something that you okay. didn't have your hand in. 
you know, uh, I get the sneaky feeling that, you know, of course, you know, I just mentioned he, he's already writing these. If you look at those Justice League trailers, it feels like Joss Whedon, too. Yeah. I so mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe he's been a bigger he, part than Yeah, exactly. Thought, yeah. If he's been a bigger because the, the quips that are in the trailer, that feels like Joss Whedon. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes even further back as well. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing, of course, I don't think I ever mentioned this on the show, was that uh, in an interview, Joss Whedon actually said before he went to go work for Warner Brothers, he actually gave the, asked Kevin Feige if it was okay with him, which mm -hmm. I don't know why. I mean, he's a director. He doesn't owe anything to Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that was cool, especially the fact that just saying that means that he and Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios are on good terms because mm -hmm. when he ended Age of Ultron, he, you know, he yeah, said something. Yeah, he didn't really go out on a high note. Exactly, but giving comments like that makes me think that he is in still good talks with Marvel Studios. Now he's going to be in good talks with Warner Brothers and literally just give him the, the DC Cinematic Universe. It surprises me that he even wants to get involved in this after the way things ended with Marvel. Well, you know, maybe they're going to give him... But I guess, like I said, DC, the cinema, obviously isn't going as well as the Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, Joss Whedon is like a script doctor. So he so has more freedom I think he, they're going to give him more freedom to fix stuff. Yeah, I guess. Because we can honestly say that really the Marvel Studios uh, fame kicked off with Avengers. That's what blew it up. And, you know, Joss Whedon, while he's not the only person who's responsible, he was a big part of it. And I think Warner Brothers recognized that and plus all of his other success. And they're mm -hmm. like, okay, let's get him on board because not only do you bring in the talent, you bring that fan trust. Oh, I have no problem yeah. with Joss Whedon yeah. coming in. I'm just surprised. I mean, I understand why Warner Brothers is doing it. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> I'm saying I'm surprised that Joss Whedon was wanting to do it. Yeah. You have to, so. All right, anything else you want to add to the story? No. All right, moving on, uh, the second and final DC story for today. The CW has released the first trailer for their new series, Black Lightning. The show will premiere uh, in the mid-season lineup in 2018 and is based on the DC comic book character. In this one, the series centers around Jefferson Pierce, a former costume vigilante who's drawn out of retirement when his community and his own daughters are put in danger. Based on the characters from DC Comics, Black Lightning is from Alkyl and Berlanti Productions. So, of course, it's being executive produced by Greg Berlanti, the man who has brought us all the other CW superhero shows, such as Arrow, Flash, Legends Tomorrow, and Supergirl, as well as a few other things, too. So, uh, another CW superhero show. Yay! Right, Lisa? I thought it looked pretty good. I mean, yeah. I don't dislike. I just don't watch TV. Yeah. I, I don't have any problem with the superhero shows, the CW shows. I mean, Arrow, I never really could get into. It's a little too dark for me. It's Batman. But, yeah. <laughs> but, um... Let's just say, the, call it The it other is. ones that you watch, I don't dislike them. I just can't. Yeah, you started to watch The Flash. I did, and, 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 I, and I don't dislike Supergirl when I come in over your shoulder yeah. and watch bits and pieces here and there. I just don't have time to devote to all those shows like you do. But you watch shows while you sew, so I do, but I not you do that? But I watch shows while I sew that I don't really have to, like, watch. I, it's exactly the same thing. You watch these British detective shows, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you have to pay less attention to the superhero shows. Trust right, but me. I like the British shows uh, better. I see. I see. Yeah, I see the anyway, I thought this trailer looked good. Yes. I think this show looks good. I think yeah. it's going to hit a market that, I mean, especially with the black audiences. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's about real things. Yeah. Like, you know, just the crime. the crime in black yeah. communities. And the, and the, in the trailer, you saw the character. He, you know, gave up to being a vigilante to be a high school principal to mm -hmm. still try to make a difference mm -hmm. in the community. Yeah. Well, you know, when it falls apart, he's got to go back to it. Uh, I think there's a lot they could do with this, a lot they could play on this as far as, you know, the fact that he's not uh, a younger guy like, you know, mm -hmm. Barry Allen or Oliver Queen or even, mm -hmm. you know, Supergirl. He's, you know, he's a dad. He's got teenage mm -hmm. daughters. Yeah. He's, he's been there, you know, fighting crime for a while. He, he He's old, almost like an old man Logan. I guess you could almost make yeah. that. Uh, and he doesn't want to fight, but, you know, when he's backed mm -hmm. into a corner. Another cool thing I saw in this trailer was um, with the character... His daughters looks like they're going to develop some powers too. Yeah. So he's going to have to maybe show them the ropes, maybe get a sidekick, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah, but he's not going to want to bring his he's, daughters oh, into the mix. Course, I think they're going to be the kind yeah. that become behind his well, back. That's what it always is. Yeah. When, you know, you have the younger person who, like, um, you know, like in the Flash, he had Kid Flash who mm -hmm. got powers. You know, his dad and Barry didn't want him to have, be it, but he wanted to. Mm -hmm. So they eventually had to accept it and realize that they had to train him because mm -hmm. they were going to go. He was going to go off and fight crime no matter yeah, what. Yeah, no matter what. So I might as well just train him mm -hmm. and stick by his side in that. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things people don't know also about the character. I'm not 
super familiar with Black Lightning, but I do know he was the first African America DC character. Um, Marvel had Black Panther as their first African American character or black character. Yeah, the DC term now is black. Black, yes. Well, a f- Black Panther wasn't American. He well, was, Black Panther, talking. he's it, not even African American. Exactly. He's just African. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, but Black Lightning, uh, yeah, DC Comics' first. Uh, African American character or black character in that I'm very curious. I don't know, like I don't know a lot about the character. Uh, I know he, you know, he literally does have lightning powers. He's a meta human, as they say, but I don't know his origin. So I'm curious how they're going to handle that in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing, of course, is yeah, it's a Greg Berlanti show, but it's said not to be in the Arrowverse. It's not supposed to be connected oh. with the Flash. Yeah, that's weird. That's I mean, originally, I why? From what I've heard, it's not connected. Hmm. Which I think is a mistake, to be honest. Yeah, why would they do that? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I think, I hope they, they change their mind on that and they will connect it. But as of right now, from what I've heard, it's not going to be part of the series. Uh, hmm. Which I'm a little disappointed in because, again, I from what I know about the character, I do like him. And I'd like to see him interact with Arrow and Flash and all of them as well. I'm still very disappointed that after this season of Flashpoint and very messing with the timeline, they didn't incorporate Supergirl directly into it because she's she's in the universe, but she's on a different Earth or a different reality. So, you know, she doesn't interact quite as much with Flash and Green Arrow as, you know, they do with each other, which I thought was a mistake. Mm. But in any, any event, um, that's where that's in. But yeah, I'm looking forward. I'll definitely uh, check this out. And uh, I'll probably end up watching it because it is a CW superhero show. Well, maybe after I finish the show that I'm watching now, uh-huh. then I'll... I, I think you should really go back, of course. Uh, I just, I love those British murder mystery shows. I love them. <laughs> yeah, the one I'm watching <laughs> now is not British. It's from Scotland. So I'm just saying. Okay. Any, any of it. Yeah, I think, of course, I don't, I don't recommend Arrow for you, but I do no, recommend no, no, go, go back and finish Flash. And I think you should pick up Supergirl because I think you'll like Supergirl as well. No. Mm. All if right. I find a new murder mystery, though, I may have to... <laughs> You're going to get sidetracked. I know you will. I know you're going to get sidetracked already. I love already. those murder mysteries. They're the best. Okay, all right. I found a shirt online that said, um, I went to Midsummer and I survived. And I totally want it. And no one will get it. <laughs> Nobody will no get it. No one will get but it except I you and your will, mom. And I love it. Hey, people um, watch that show. You and your mom are the only ones who will get it. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So that's it for DC News. Moving on to Marvel News. Sony has announced that they have officially picked a star and a director for their Venom standalone film. Picked none other than Tom Hardy himself to star in the film. And the director is going to be the guy who directed Zombieland, Ruben Flesher. Uh, he also directed the film Gangster Squad, but they choose to focus on the better movie that he directed, <laughs> it appears. Now, uh, Sony Pictures is looking for this to be the first film... In their Spider-Man cinematic universe, they want to get started. But of course, Spider-Man as of right now is in the Marvel cinematic universe. And it is said that uh, he Venom will not be a part of the cinematic universe. So this is going to be its own standalone film. Said to be followed by a Silver Sable and Black Cat spinoff. Uh, now, they tried to get a Venom, or they planned a Venom movie back in 2013 following the release of Amazing Spider-Man 2. That film did not perform as well as Sony hoped and was met worse with critical response. That's like the understatement of the year. <laughs> they even had a uh, Sinister, Six film, uh, Sinister Six film planned as well, but when that all fell apart, uh, we got the new deal now where Marvel and Sony are putting Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So with this one, we're not quite sure how they're going to do it without really mentioning Spider-Man. If they will, I'm not sure, but uh, it is said that are they not even allowed to mention Spider-Man? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I just thought they couldn't use his likeness in the film. Tom Holland's likeness, maybe? Or? Yeah. Like, I think Spider-Man can't actually be in well, the film, but yeah. surely they can at least reference Spider-Man. <laughs> well, they've got to do something. So, it, but so, maybe not. I mean, they can't even say the term X-Men in the other ones. And yet, so. They can't say mutants in the... in the, in the, in the Yeah, uh, so maybe. Yeah, maybe they can't and, even say Spider-Man. That's crazy. So, uh, Tom Hardy is going to be played... Did I say Tom Hardy or Tom Holland? You said Tom Hardy. Okay, I want to make sure... <laughs> All right, so Tom Hardy is going to be playing the original Venom, Eddie Brock, who is a disgraced journalist who becomes a host to the alien symbiote after it is rejected by Peter Parker. So Venom is one of the more infamous Spider-Man villains, um, but there have been points where he's not really a villain, more of an anti-hero. Kind of his origin is that um, Spider-Man gets the alien symbiote when he's off in space fighting with the other Marvel superheroes, 
it brings it, it makes him more powerful, but brings out more of his aggressive qualities. So he decides to get rid of it. Then the symbiote latches on to Eddie Brock, who is a journalist who is uh, also has a grudge against Peter Parker. So uh, the symbiote, having been attached to Spider Man, uh, gains some of his powers, and that's why Venom is Spider Man like with the web shooters and all that stuff. And then they go after Peter Parker, but. Eddie Brock also, not being a very, you know, bad guy in general, he does, you know, do have some heroic tales. It's just that he, he has such a hatred for Peter Parker and Spider-Man. That's really why he's considered more of a villain a lot of the times, too. With this, the current Venom they have in the storyline is Flash Thompson, who is uh, working for the government. And I find that a more interesting tale than the one of Eddie Brock. But I guess since Eddie Brock is more of the original incarnation of Venom. That's what they're going to go with. That's fine by me. Tom Harding, great actor. Can't not, you know, doubt their decision to go with Tom Harding on this. Um, but you had some choice words to say about Tom Harding's decision to, to be in this film, and what were they? Uh, I, what did I what say? What were you saying in the car? Well, I mean, I think it's kind of a stupid choice. <laughs> okay. Like, I mean, well, it's like, so Tom Hardy... You know, I mean, he, he, it seems like. He's known to be picky he, he as is. well. So that, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so uh, he, from what Hollywood says, he's picky in when he chooses to do movies. So choosing to do this one, a lot of people are like, it must be a great script. Why else would he choose to do it? Or, and I was like, or they just threw a boatload of money at him. Uh -huh. Because this movie, even if it's a great script, it, it's. The likelihood of this movie being an all-out success, to w and, and they obviously are going to have plans. There's no way they're making a Venom movie without already having plans for the future. Yeah. Like a Venom series or like with the, the Sinisters, yeah. whatever. They, they have plans. They're, they're not making this as like a one-off. You know, they, they have a plan. Whether or not they have an announced plan or even have it in writing. The people who are making this, these decisions, have a plan. They're not going to sign him to a one-picture deal. There's no way. No, no, no. No, no right. studio does that so nowadays. So him choosing to do this when he really, up to this point, he has been pickier. He has done... I mean, he doesn't just do like... I mean, he does big budget films, not like little tiny dinky ones. But he's not in like everything you see. Yeah. It just seems like getting involved in a film like this where the likelihood of it being really, really successful is pretty low, I think... I mean, maybe, but Spider-Man has not had a lot of success long-term in the past, and we're already starting with a villain-esque film, where the villain films haven't mm -hmm. done well ever, mm -hmm. when you have a villain as the primary character. Mm -hmm. I just think this is a weird decision. I, it's got to be money. I just don't see why else he chose to do this. Mm -hmm. Unless Venom is, like, his all-time favorite character, to where he was just so excited I mean, to be I, Venom. I highly doubt the man has ever read a comic book in his life. Okay, well, that probably is true, which leads me back to my original statement that... Money? It's got to be money. I mean, I just don't see this script being like... You know, I mean, he's the kind of guy that I feel like would look for Oscar bait. Like, he wants to be in an Oscar caliber film. Yeah. This is, I just don't see him reading this and being mm, like, which, wow, well, this is so mean. It, it's got to be one of those things, too. I mean, I've, I've thought about this. Well, I mean, it's been said where you get involved in these, these superhero franchises or these big budget films like, you know, um, you know, the Avengers, Star Wars, Superman, Batman. And you know, no matter what else you do in your life, mm -hmm. that's the first line of a eulogy. Yeah. So maybe, you know, I mean, like you said, with, with Captain America, Chris Evans playing Captain America, he wants to keep playing that character as much as he can because he knows what it's done for his career. Mm -hmm. He knows it gives him other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that it brings so much joy to other people. Right. Like he can go into, you know, children's hospitals and yeah, stuff like Venom. that. Yeah, Venom. Venom. <laughs> I mean, come on! It's not Spider Man. It's not it's Captain not America. It's Venom. Yeah, I, got I you. mean, I agree with that. And again, I'm just my questions are a, um, you know, it is a he is known as a villain, and how can you you know make mm -hmm. a story around that? Like with Suicide Squad, Warner Brothers was like, this is about the bad guys. This is about the villains. And I watched the movie. I'm like, no, I can see all these guys' point of view. I can see why they're mm -hmm. doing this. They're not. Really that bad, really, is yeah. what it is. And I think, you know, they're going to slant it more that way, which is why I think they should have gone more with the Flash Thompson uh, way, which, you know, is more later on and Eddie Brock's, you know, the original, I get that. But Flash Thompson is a good guy who just, you know, the symbiote 
um, costume that he uses brings out his darker instincts as opposed to Eddie Brock. He's, again, not a bad guy, but he's not nowhere near the hero that Flash Thompson is. Mm -hmm. And I can see them much more building a actual series of films around that character as opposed to Eddie Brock. But, I mean, to me, the, the main thing is it's a Spider-Man cinematic universe and Spider-Man is already it? being used. Yeah. So how are they going to... Are you literally going to try to put two Spider-Mans from two separate studios, allegedly, out there? I mean, because then you also have your animated Spider-Man coming out. How many Spider-Mans can you put on the big screen? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just... And, and personally... It's Spider-Man Overkill because there are a lot mm -hmm. of people who, you know, they've been mass producing these Spider-Man movies, even this character, ever since the first film came out in 2002. And I know a lot of people that are on I mean, Spider-Man. This, this is only 15 yeah, years. Exactly. Look how many Spider-Man Spider reboots we've already yeah, had. Third reboot. It's like yeah. going to be the sixth or seventh film. I know a lot of people that are on Spider-Man Fatigue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm fully behind, you know, making a Venom movie. It's just a matter of what they're doing with it and how they're doing with it that gets me a little worried. Um, I just we'll, think it's a weird choice for Tom Hardy. Yeah, and of course we'll see how it goes because we don't know how long Sony and Marvel have their deal to get, for Marvel can use Spider-Man. I mean, I think it's supposed to be like maybe a couple of Spider-Man movies and a couple of Avengers movies and that's it. I mean, for all we know, after that fourth Avengers movie, that could be the end of Spider-Man and the MCU and then Sony just solely takes them back, which I think would be a mistake in my opinion. But mm -hmm. in any event, we'll just have to wait and see how this goes. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, there it is. Uh, the film set to come out October 5th, 2018. So it's actually going to come out uh, before the fourth Avengers film, too. So, I don't know. I, I like to think they have plans, but it appears like no other studio has really followed through on their cinematic universe except for Marvel. Because everyone else is just trying to copy Marvel, and that's yeah. the problem. It's like Marvel has a plan, that, and they already have things in motion before they announce a million. Like they've changed their plan a couple times, yeah. but overall, they generally stick to their plan. Yeah, they make they, their movies on a reasonable yeah. timeline. It's not like DC where they announce they like announce the whole 100 slate, movies, and, and then just, like nothing is happening. You know, whatever. I mean, I just feel like this is going to be another one of those where they're going to like have all these big plans, and then nothing's going to. Yeah, get I could see them coming out with this Venom film and not doing well, and then they nothing else. Scrap it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because they, according, if they don't have the ability to put Spider Man in this movie, mm -hmm. I think it's going to fail. Well, and that's another reason why it worries me that Tom Hardy signed on for this. Like, I just can't figure out what it's got to be money. Oh, it's got to be like there's no other explanation. Yeah. But he just, I don't know. Okay. All right. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. We got other stuff to talk about. Uh, so that's the only piece of Marvel news we got. Now we're going to uh, venture into the magical and lovely world of Star Wars. So StarWars.com and Marvel have announced several new comics coming out. Uh, one of them is going to be first featured around the character Mace Windu. It's going to be a new five-issue miniseries coming out in August. Uh, it's called Star Wars Jedi of the Republic. Uh, it's going to take place right after the start of the Clone Wars penned by Matt Owens and illustrated by Denise Cowan. And the official synopsis is, quote, For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights have been the peacekeepers of the galaxy. But now, at the dawn of the Clone Wars, they find themselves in a new role, generals in the Army of the Republic. As Mace Windu, one of the Jedi's greatest warriors, leads a small unit of Jedi into battle shortly after the war begins, the Jedi must make peace with their new role or be lost to the violence around them. The other comic that's coming out is a one-shot Star Wars Rogue One Cassian and K2SO special number one, which is set to reveal how the duo first met. Also set to come out in August, the 40-page one-shot will be written by Dwayne Switzerski. I know I mispronounced that, <laughs> as I do with our very name, and illustrated by Fernando Blanco. So out of the two comics, which one are you more excited for, Lisa? Oh, I'm much more excited for the K2SO and Cassian. Me too, one. me too. I mean, for me, it's about the fact that, okay... In the, in the Star Wars run, 40 years of Star Wars, okay, we had the original trilogy characters. And starting in the 90s, we got a whole slew of expanded universe stuff, which I know long, no longer counts in the, you know, in the in the canon, okay? But then, of course, all the, the comics they're coming out with now are all, all st still in the original trilogy era. So we're getting a decent amount of stuff from those, those original characters. Then you have, when the prequels were, were out... You got a bunch of stuff having to do with the prequel characters, such as Anakin, Obi Wan, Mace Windu, all that stuff. Uh, but with the Rogue One characters, you have that one film, and that's it. So for me, it's about the fact that I've spent years with Mace Windu, okay, especially during the Clone Wars, you know. 
Mm -hmm. I'd much rather see more about characters I don't know that much about, such as Cassie in, in K2SO, than have another Mace Windu story, which, personally, I've seen the Clone Wars. I've read the Clone Wars. I really don't need any more that much about Mace Windu, because I didn't find him that interesting of a character. That's exactly my thing. I don't, I've never exactly understood people's interest in Mace Windu. I've never found him to be that No, it's just the fact that he's played by Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, like, and I think that's cool. Yeah, whatever. And he has a purple lightsaber. Woo! <laughs> but, like, I've never found the character to be all that intriguing. I mean, I would much rather see, instead of, the, also, too, I guess it's where they said it. It's, like, during the Clone Wars. Well, I know what Mace Windu is during the Clone Wars. I've, again, I've, I've well, seen it. I've read it. Well, this, though, if you read the thing, it's about the beginning. It's about, like, basically when the Jedi first got drawn into the conflict and that. I mean, and I understand there's probably a lot of good stories to tell there because that is a huge transition for yeah, them. Personal to stories, go yeah. from peacekeepers to to like Generals. literally soldiers. Uh -huh. That's a big switch for the Jedi. And I mean a lot of that is what like ended up, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. Clone Wars. But um I mean so I guess I can kind of see like showing and especially from, you know, Mace Windu, he was one of the ones that was easiest to convince uh -huh. to switch like uh -huh. to, to to transition from peacekeeper to you know, like, it's like mm -hmm. I've been reading, I just started reading Dark Disciple. Dark Disciple, yeah. You know, and in that one, too, they talk about how, you know, he he's the first, you know, he, he was the first one that was like... Suggested... Yeah, we gotta we, kill him. We gotta kill Dooku. Yeah, you know, and that's not a Jedi thought. That's not yeah. a Jedi action. You know, it's how, I mean, that's the kind of thing that with Anakin, where we were like, this guy is going dark. I mean, he just freaking assassinated him, like, yeah. right there. Yeah. You know, like... So, I mean, I can kind of see why there's a draw to Windu in that respect, because he does have a little bit more of that darkness in him than some of the other uh -huh. Jedi. But I still would much rather learn about Cassian and K2SO. Yeah. I mean, Cassian had been, I mean, he says in the movie, you know, he's been part of the Rebellion since he was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm just really interested to see more stories of that yeah, time. Yeah, how that, I mean, again, just, yeah, I want to learn more about the Rogue One characters, too, because mm -hmm. I think they're each interesting and, you know, I want to see more. I would still love, we have, when we got the... The Rebels season four trailer, we see what looks like Cassian's ship or one of the models like his ship. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Cassian pop up in Rebels season four. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I mean, he's in the rebellion during that time. Um, I would love to see more about that. But again, going back to Mace Windu, there are two time frames that, you know, being a celebration, um, people have voiced their opinions that they want to see. They want to see between episode three and episode four more stuff about that, but they also want to see before Phantom Menace. Whether it be Old Republic or even close to it, mm -hmm. and I would I would be much more interested in this Mace Windu series if it was a before Phantom Menace because Mace Windu, yeah, while I don't find the character particularly intriguing, he rose up to be you know the head of the Jedi Council. How? How exactly? Mm -hmm. As opposed to you know another Clone Wars tale that you know I've seen and heard mm -hmm. a lot of those. Yeah, I, I really hope some Old Republic stuff is coming just because you know the newer things that we're getting now. There's no more Jedi. Yeah. Like, the Jedi, after episode three, there really isn't, I mean, those first, the prequels are really where you get the Jedi. Yeah. Anything after that, there's, like, maybe one or two Jedis, a few Force. They're all in hiding. Or they're dead. Yeah. So, you know, I would love, but the Jedi is what, you know, we, I I love the stories of the yeah, Jedi. that's what draws me in. Yeah. Right, exactly. And so it's, like, the newer things that we're getting, you know, you still have, like, Kylo Ren and, like, this with Rey and, yeah. and the new ones, too, but it's not really about... The Jedi. Like, the Jedi are basically gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see the glory days of the Jedi. I want I want some films or yeah. some books back in the old... I want... Old in Republic. the Old Republic. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see when the Jedi were powerful, when yeah. there were thousands of Jedi. Yep. And stories like that. I, I want some... I mean, I love the Star Wars universe, and what I love about it is that there are so many different mm -hmm. types of stories you can tell, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm ready for something that's more back... Exactly. Back so, in totally the, further. Back in the Which back. Is, yeah, again, we've talked about this, too. I would much love to see after this new trilogy or whatever, take a break after episode nine and give me a trilogy of Old Republic. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. So, yeah, I uh, think so. Okay. All right. So that's enough for Star Wars news. Now we move on to miscellaneous, guys. Uh, first up, CBS has released the first trailer for the network's upcoming Star Trek television series, Star Trek Discovery. The series is going to take place 10 years before the events of the original show that starred William Shatner as Kirk and Leonard Nimoy as Spock. The Discovery follows the crew of the USS Discovery, a Starfleet vessel, as they explore worlds and cultures at the edge of the known space. Now, the show was originally intended to run for 13 episodes, but will now go 15 episodes in its first season. Star Trek Discovery uh, is going to air the first episode on CBS this fall, and then we're going to see the uh, following episodes 
on the CBS All Access service, which will be, I believe they said, about $5 a month if you want to continue to watch Star Trek Discovery. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you just saw the first trailer, Lisa. What would you think? Well, I have a question. Is this in the Kelvin timeline or the original timeline? I don't know, honestly. Well, I will say this, though. One thing I was going to mention. The Klingons look exactly like they do in the new movies as opposed to how they did in the old TV series and old movies. So it's likely that it's going to follow likely. the Kelvin. Because if it's five years before Spock and Kirk, that means it's... We have to choose a timeline. It yeah. can't. It's not like prior to exactly. the events of when Kirk was born. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna have to pick a timeline here. So I don't know which I, one they're I using. Didn't, I didn't think about that. That, um, that is a good question, actually. Um, as far as which way they're going with yeah, it. Yeah, like because the movies are now are all the they're going forward with the Kelvin timeline. Yeah. So, so any new show after that it said because to, yeah, if this is not in the Kelvin timeline, even though it's five years before Kirk. Kirk would be likely, possibly already almost at the Academy. His father well, he was, would still be a member of Starfleet. Like He spent uh, like only a couple of years. I think he spent like three years at the Academy. Three or four, isn't it? Yeah, three or four years. Yeah, so at this the would be just before he went to the Academy. Yeah. But if it's the old timeline, his dad would still be a member of exactly, Starfleet. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, I I'm think, just curious. I would, I would like to think they've thought of this question, and I'm, I'm going sure to answer have. that in the first episode. I'm sure they have. Um, I... Like the new Star Trek movies, I have like almost no interest in anything of the old Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I did not like any of the shows I've seen, bits and pieces of it. It's just not my thing. I, I never could get into it. I mean, the old, old shows were just too cheesy. And yeah. even the ones like in the 90s and stuff, like I just couldn't really... I never could get into it. I didn't think the trailer looked horrible. It didn't excite me at But all. it didn't yeah. excite me. I, I mean, I, well, I wanted to get your, in, your input on the show too, but then I want to talk about the CBS thing. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean... The, the new movies, of course, I you know, Star Trek Beyond was okay. I didn't like it as much as I like Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. See, I liked it better than Into Darkness. Yeah. So. Beyond. Um, but the first so, one was by again, far the but best. With the Star Trek TV series, you know, I again, I said I grew up with sci-fi. My dad was is a Trekkie. I'll call him a Trekkie. So I've watched all the movies. Uh, I've at least seen a couple episodes of each TV series. Star Trek uh, Next Generation it was probably my favorite of them. But even that, it, I couldn't even, you know, I tried once to watch... And go through, and I couldn't even do that. There are certain episodes that I really like, uh, but just watching the whole series, I really just can't get into. But again, I like the new direction Star Trek is going. If that's the way they're going with this, with more action, uh, I could see being that way. But then, of course, you're going to piss off a lot of old Trekkie fans. But <laughs> like they sit on Collider Movie Talk, those fans are dying off. you got to get that young audience back into Star Trek if you want the franchise to survive. And the only way to do that is to make it more fresh and mm -hmm. reinvigorate it with some action and make it cool again. Yeah, which is what the films did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, so that's why I think, again, they have to follow that. Because anyone who is of the younger age that is going to get into this show, I think it's going to have to be the Kelvin timeline. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they know and that's what possibly they like yeah. compared to everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing I want to say was uh, they were talking, the, the main character in this show isn't the captain like the other Star Trek series, it's the lieutenant. And the main character, they said it sounded like she has some kind of, does, she didn't look Vulcan, but it looks like she had Vulcan yeah, origins. I don't know, I didn't Maybe really get that bit. she was raised on Vulcan, but it's still a human. Because uh, that Vulcan who was talking to her yeah. about like the language and stuff, I don't know, I, I was confused. Which I guess that that's supposed to be Spock's dad. I guess. Oh, but the younger version? Yeah, I guess. Well, no, but that's too... He's too young there I to don't, be Spock's I'm, maybe, I don't know who it is. But anyway, I, I think it's it's some relation to Spock. I know. Um, but yeah, we'll see what um, goes on with that. He can't and, be his dad. He's way too young. The, the worst part of the trailer for me was the line at the end where that one alien's like, my race is oh, uh, set yeah. to sense death. It's and I sense, sense death. I'm like, really, dude? Yeah. Really? That's the cheesiest line ever. Yeah. Ever. Uh, but it didn't get me excited. But again, I'm going to check it out. It's my duty as a geek to at least give it a try. So mm. we'll see how it goes. But okay, you want to talk about CBS All Access. Yes. Go for it. So we were talking a little bit in the car about Keep this it brief. story. Just, you know, about this whole, like we were talking about how there's, there are a lot of different apps and things now to watch. You have that CWC and there's all those different ones. Yes. That you can watch the different streaming programs. But there are, the bottom line mm. is if that channel is free, yeah. those services are, are free. free. You just have to put up with the commercials. Right, but the services are still free because that is a free channel. Like CBS is a channel. You can hook up an antenna to your TV uh -huh. and you can watch it for free. You don't have to have a service provider, whatever. Like I get it, like the Disney XD apps, those ones. You have to have Disney yeah. to access those. Uh -huh. So you have to pay already for Disney. But you don't have to pay again for the app. Uh -huh. The app is included if you're already paying. So the fact that CW is trying to, re or the C CBS is releasing the show... 
or our Star Trek, whatever, the fact that they chose CBS and for CBS to not have it on their network television, but to have it on an app that you have to pay for, mm-hmm. that it just I just yeah. don't understand that that they can't possibly want people to watch it. Yeah, they, it's like they think there are there is a big enough Star Trek, but which you know there are Star Trek conventions out there. Well, yeah, they but have, still, it's a big you know phenomenon culturally, I guess. But I don't think you know people are going to follow it like they think they will. Yeah, they think this is the way to kick off their you know their streaming service uh, by getting what they consider to be a large uh, following mm-hmm. and get them to pay for it to get to kick this um, you know service off. I don't think mm-hmm. they... Uh, it's going to bite them in the I think it's going to bite them I don't think it's going to yeah. work out the way they want it to. Because, yeah, Star Trek fans, there are you know quite a bit of them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think... Nowadays, I mean, first off, there's a lot easier ways to watch this stuff. Yeah. Legally or illegally. Yeah. Than to pay the money for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, uh, the fact that, guess what? You wait nine months... You can watch all the seasons probably on, on, Netflix. on Netflix or something like that. Yeah, there's it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, and I mean, although, like we've said, we're not Trekkies. Mm-hmm. And if this was a new Star Wars show that they were releasing, we would pay the money. In a, in a heartbeat, yeah, we would pay the true. money. We would. But I just don't... The Star Trek base is not like the Star Wars base. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is. Maybe I mean, we're going to be... I would say there, there, there is... You know, there are... There, I'm not trying to downplay the, the Star Trek... Trek uh, franchise, it's great, but how many little four-year-old girls are dressing up like Spock? Yeah, exactly. That That's what I'm saying. I just don't see this working the way CBS wants it to. I mean, I think it's stupid regardless that CBS is making their thing pay. That's insane. Like, what they... I mean, it was bad back in the day when Hulu wouldn't, couldn't even watch CBS shows. Yeah. Like, what CBS thinks they're protecting... Like, they're so, like, this is mine. Yeah, yeah, It's exactly. like they're Smeagol with their Well, I shows. think they're going to do that with, the, you know, the, the, the all-access stuff. They're going to put all their shows on well, there. Yeah, but, but and then try to charge you for it? It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. People you. are already paying for, for Hulu, Hulu and Netflix and, and everything else. And all that. Yeah, they're not going to pay again yeah. to watch. It's, yeah, they've I mean, already been getting by without being able yeah, to stream like, the CBS shows. Even on uh, Sling. Sling, you can watch Fox, NBC mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Uh, be but again, CBS nor Yeah, found. CBS has never let you do that. So people are already used to not being able to watch the CBS shows on these online streaming <laughs> programs, and now they're like, "Well, you can now." Yeah. But for more money. But they think again, and then here's okay. Here's the thing about CBS too. Is we're getting kind of off topic, guys. So we're gonna have to skip a few things coming up. But anyway, CBS. Okay, let's 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 be real. Okay, CBS's audience are older people. Yes. Okay, people who are not that tech savvy. People who change it to CBS. Because they probably don't know how to change the channel otherwise. Oh, that is like the most <laughs> ridiculous thing you've ever said. I'm just saying. They, they appeal to that older demographic, okay? So if they think that older demographic is going to pay for that streaming service too, mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. Because mm-hmm. they won't. Yeah. They I mean, because the people that are going to want to watch this show are people like your dad. Yeah. He's he's not going he's he's not, not to He do doesn't this. watch that many shows in general, so yeah. let alone paying extra you know to watch mm-hmm. more shows that he doesn't even yeah. watch and the other people who would want to watch it like ian uh-huh. our brother and my brother-in-law he's gonna figure out a way to get it for free exactly so there's just no yeah, it's gonna again, lose lose it's just lose lose for <laughs> lose, them. lose exactly they just need to put it on regular cbs mm-hmm. and then you know what if the first season is successful i can see them maybe doing something yeah. with it like you know spinoff or whatever and putting that on the all mm-hmm. channel again it's just it's a vessel for them to try to launch this service, and I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Okay, so we're running a little over, so we're going to skip. I'm just going to mention a couple stories Nobody that we're skipping. About this story. Uh, yeah, so first one we're going to skip is uh, they're making a uh, Dark Crystal prequel series on Netflix. Did you watch Dark Crystal? I never at all? watched Dark Crystal. I, ne- I wasn't big into it. I was more of a Labyrinth guy myself. Those two I never were kind were. of paired mm-hmm. together, but uh, mm-hmm. that's coming out, so some people are excited for that. And then, of course, <laughs> just, just released on Blu ray like a week ago was Resident Evil the final chapter and now Constantine Films is already talking about rebooting the franchise. Um, kind of ridiculous considering I don't like any I my mean, brother those was movies. Oh, do you see my brother? My brother uh, when it came out posted uh, all his Resident Evil DVDs all next to each other and he was super excited. And I like I mean there is a there group is, of people that are all about John Schnepp from Collider loves those movies. Yeah. He loves them because they're ridiculous. Yeah. But, but he I likes just them. rebooting them just seems but weird. Exactly, like exactly. they just finished. They just finished and they're rebooting. Why? Because this studio has nothing else. Yeah. It literally has nothing else. It just seems weird to me, like to reboot 
a series that like literally just ended. Uh huh. Exactly. Like, give it some time. Okay. Uh, so moving on to the last story, guys. Just real quick. Uh, there was a new Transformers Last Night trailer and a new Mummy trailer that came out uh, within the last week. But we've reviewed enough trailers on both of those. Yeah. I figure we could skip them. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to watch the Mummy one because, um, to be honest, I'm sold on this movie now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go watch The Mummy in theaters. That first trailer I thought it was ridiculous. Uh, I haven't seen a Tom Cruise movie in theaters since... Did you see the uh, one... Minority Report? That long ago? Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't see... It. Maybe, no, Mission Impossible 3 I think I saw. Mm. Was that... that, was, that what was about after. the one he did with Emily Blunt that was really good? We no, didn't, I didn't see that because theaters, it was right? horribly marketed. Yeah. And I, when I watched it on DVD, I liked it. But again, it was it mm -hmm. was horribly marketed, so I didn't see I it. I honestly can't even remember the last time I saw a Tom Cruise mm -hmm. movie in the theater. Exactly. So, But The Mummy has sold me because they're selling me on the cinematic universe. So this last story we got is that Universal Pictures has officially announced a name for their monster cinematic universe. They're calling it the Dark Universe. Now, along with this, they set out, they put out a trailer, which is a combination of all their classic uh, 30s, 40s horror films, such as Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, all that stuff, to kind of, you know, promote what they're doing with uh, the newer films. And uh, as we know, The Mummy comes out on June 9th, and it's going to be followed by The Bride of Frankenstein, starring Javier Bardem on February 14th, 2019. Pride of Frankenstein sounds like a great Valentine's Day movie there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but another thing, along with the trailer, they put out a picture of their cast for this cinematic universe. Included was Johnny Depp, who was set to play the Invisible Man. Uh, you have Javier Bardem, who's set to play Frankenstein's monster. Then, of course, Tom Cruise uh, as Nick Morton, who's going to be in The Mummy. Russell Crowe as Henry Jekyll, who's, again, going to be in this movie and get his own solo film, I think. And then Sofia Vitella, who's playing the main villain in The Mummy. Now, this is going to be the first movie, like I said, in a series of cinematic universes uh, with characters such as The Invisible Man, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and The Bride of Frankenstein. The first thing I want to comment on that is they left out the two biggest uh, horror characters, which are Dracula and Wolfman. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they're doing with that. I'll comment on that in a sec. But Lisa, what do you think about you know the, the Universal getting their really putting out this photo and also officially giving their universe a name. I mean, I don't really like scary movies, so I have very little interest in these. Uh -huh. um, I liked that Mummy one with Brendan Fraser. Oh, I watched it on Blu-ray, too. I liked the first one. I didn't see the other one. Uh, the second one was good. The third one was crap. Um, I... I never saw any... I've never seen a Dr. Jekyll okay, movie. Was, I mean, I know the story, like, okay, but the, I've like never the, seen the one. The two most couple of recent things you've gotten... Uh, several years ago, there was that um, The Wolfman with mm -hmm. Benicio Del Toro, yeah, I Emily never saw, Blunt. Never saw I kind of liked that. People didn't like it, but I liked it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the movie that was supposed to kick off their monster universe was Dracula Untold with mm -hmm. Luke Evans, right, which, which bombed, which mm -hmm. is why they're starting over. Yeah, I've with never, the I've never liked any Dracula type movies either. I mean, I, I don't, I like some vampire movies, but you know me, I like the ones that aren't scary. Uh huh. Um, because I don't really like scary movies. Okay. The thing about this, number one, I don't like Russell Crowe. <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two, I don't like Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, number three, I feel like it's weird to start with Bride of Frankenstein. Because, like, where's going to be the origin where's story Frankenstein? for Frankenstein's monster? Maybe they just don't do it. It seems like a weird place to jump in. Like... I know. I, I mean, we all know Frankenstein's origin, so why not just skip it, you know? Well... It's like it's like with Spider-Man, okay? We all know Spider-Man's origin, so mm -hmm. why not just skip it for this next movie? Yeah, but I think that you're underestimating that we all know it. Like, we know it. I think a lot of young people probably don't. I mean, is Frankenstein I mean, still regular reading in schools? I don't know, but I mean... Did you ever read Frankenstein? No, I didn't read Frankenstein, but... Um, crap, I forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead. I mean, I just, I don't think that the Frankenstein origin story is as well known as you think. Okay. For the... Uh, but, I mean, I think, feel like in that movie, they're going to mention it, though. I mean, they're going to, like, I mean, they're going to have to. They're going to have to. Yeah. But, that, so it just seems weird to me to make it a Bride of Frankenstein yeah. movie instead of starting with Frankenstein. I mean, personally, I think Bride of Frankenstein is a much more interesting story to tell than just the original Frankenstein character. So let's give you a, you know, a couple of sentences or a couple of dialogues about Frankenstein and move on mm -hmm. to the more interesting story. I guess. I'm not excited about this stuff at all. Um, I think that the, what they're calling it, the Dark, dark universe, universe, is like one of the lamest things I've ever heard. Like, I, I think it's actually cool. I think but. it's pretty lame. Okay. But 
I do think it is unusual that they did not mention anything about Dracula or the Wolfman. That's like, what that got me because like those are yeah, be those are the two most famous. Honestly, I mean, yeah, you could put Mummy and um, uh, what is Frankenstein up there, but you gotta think okay in, in the in the in the pantheon of classic horror vil- movies or characters, Dracula is at the top. Then Wolfman, then Frankenstein. I, would, I think Frankenstein's. I you think over Frankenstein? Wolfman. Really? Okay. Well, we got to think. Okay, I think the reason they didn't mention Dracula and Wolfman because, like I just said, those are the two most recent movies that Universal has done movies for, mm-hmm. like with the Wolfman and Dracula Untold. So maybe that's why. I have no doubt they're going to incorporate them. Mm-hmm. But with this as well, just based off the Mummy, you can see this isn't really a horror film it's more of an action film yeah and i think that's what the route they're going they're going to make these more action oriented Mm -hmm. than horror oriented yeah me personally i don't really like horror movies but i don't like slasher horror movies Mm -hmm. i'm a big fan of vampire films and werewolf films i'll get i'll see anything just about any i saw what was that one movie blood and something that came out like 10 years ago it was absolutely horrible and i can't believe i even watched it but I can't remember the name of it. But it was really stupid. Um, so it goes to show you that I'll watch yeah. any, anything, you know, mm-hmm. no matter how ridiculous it is, like Twilight. So, but in that sense... That was unnecessary. <laughs> that was an unnecessary Unnecessary, but yes, I had to get the dig in there. I just had to do it, okay? In any event, um, I think... It, I like the fact that, hey, guess what? Here's our plan, guys. We can see the plan now. Mm-hmm. As opposed to... Someone like Warner Brothers, who's always like, oh, we kind of got this going. We might do this. We might do this. We're not quite sure yet. Mm-hmm. This, they're, you know, they're, they're locking it in, you know. It's just a matter of, again, if they actually follow through on it, mm-hmm. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today's show. Uh, now it's time for you to fire back. Let us know. Are you excited for this dark universe Universal is doing? Uh, did you see the Black Lightning trailer? Did you see the Star Trek trailer? And, of course... Uh, let us know what you think about Joss Whedon taking over the Justice League film. Uh, remember, discussions at gmail.com. You can fire back on the Facebook group or on Twitter. Find me personally on Instagram and Twitter at Slim, S-L-Y-M, Dayspring12. And, of course, join us Thursday because, like I said, me and my buddy Aaron are going to be here talking about CW superhero shows. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, some crazy stuff might happen. Oh, last thing before I got to mention, Thursday is also the official 40th anniversary of Star Wars. That's right. May 25th, 1977, uh, Star Wars came out in theaters. So you can be sure I'm going to watch some Star Wars movies. And if I'm watching Star Wars movies, you can be sure I'm going to have some drinks in my hand. So might get a little crazy, guys. It might be a really fun show to watch, given the fact that I might be a couple beers in. So in any event, uh, catch us on Thursday. Catch us next week. And that's going to be it. Until next time, may the Force be with us all.